All right. Here's one of your favorite tag teams of all time. Conrad. Here they come dancing. I think me and you need to do this. If we do live shows ever again, now that you're busy. Yeah. Look at this. Look at buff Bagwell. That's how he was dancing on the way to the parking lot before Atlas got him. <laughs> <laughs> Looks awfully young here. I, Hey, you know what? We, we've, we've shit on buff a number of times and probably rightfully so. Well, we'll do it a lot more. We're not. Oh, uh, yes. Out. Oh, yes. We're not. That's right. It's never stopped us. Uh, but when he first started, he was a very young, good looking man. He was okay. And I'm saying that not in a sexual way. He was a very handsome man. Wasn't he? Okay. I guess I'm the only one commenting on that. Yep. Paul, Paul Orndorff had to be pretty pissed off. Okay. I mean, here's a guy who had to wrestle for us coming up in a few years. He would have to wrestle the, uh, uh the renegade. Right. And here now we're asking him to wrestle with Evad Dave to be Dave Sullivan to be Evad right now as the equalizer. Stop talking into the camera. God. And as, as good a guy as the equalizer was, and he was a nice man. Boy, was he terrible, but he was put into a spot to where Oh, it ain't his fault. Right. That's you guys, really. Y'all don't know what the fuck you were doing with him. No, we did. Somebody looked at, at him one time and says, does he not look like Kevin Sullivan to you? And that's where we came up with the idea of Kevin Sullivan's brother. I feel like most of the gimmicks in this era were just sort of half-assed i mean the equalizer gimmick you know from the furry boots and all that the presentation he looks like a villain from like every 80s movie right he's at least cast in the right role to be the bad guy though yeah thankfully this match is uh star and half by the way we should mention charlie norris uh and big sky got a dud is that a surprise no surprise at all. Uh, this one here, going to get star and a half. Mm. Coming up next though, I strain in Shanghai get negative one star. Well, Shanghai went on to have a pretty good, pretty good career. And yeah, we'll talk about that when he comes out, but Scorpio. Man, Scorpio was so far ahead of his time, was he not? Yes, yes, he was. How about this? If you don't like too cold Scorpio, fuck you. <laughs> Dude, he was awesome. I love Hey, him. if you don't like too cold Scorpio, fuck you. Okay. I'm fine with that, aren't you? Yeah, I am too. That's how I feel sometime about people who don't like our podcast, but I get it. You you can't please everybody. I understand that. Well, enough people liked it to, uh, make you a goddamn millionaire. So (laughs) got that going. (laughs) I am not a millionaire. Let me yet. Uh, let me say that. Yeah. 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 We know yet. Okay. All the wires haven't come through, but when all the wires are through, it's done deal, baby. Yeah, but I'd like to say this about the new company that I'm working for. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is this, this is feeling more and more like grilling Jr. every week. <laughs> it's just, really? you know, we're supposed to be talking about fall brawl 93 and you fucks just can't help, but just beat off to AEW. I love AEW too. Starcast four full gear roll tide, but you're disparaging and ruining a perfectly good equalizer buff Bagwell <laughs> match. And I won't stand for it. Okay. On second thought. Yeah. What about AEW? Go ahead. My bad. Laps. And I knew you could. I knew you couldn't say that without laughing. <laughs> Ruining a perfectly good equalizer match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have some very good creative people that 
are behind the scenes. We really do. We have some great creative people behind the scenes, and I'm I'm thrilled about working with them. Uh, names that you wouldn't know if I'd say their names, but they're just tremendous. And I'm excited about be, uh, about working with them. I really am. I like so, that. I like that you tried to put them over, but then you're like, hey, but they're a bunch of no name fucks. So I'm not even, <laughs> not even worth mentioning. <laughs> QT. I mean, that's, so you're talking about really nice guys who are. Who are Steve Jeff Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, you <laughs> deal pickle <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> I mean, people that <laughs> most of our listeners would know, but you're like, yeah. Oh no, they're not worthy of a mention. <laughs> Just if you're going to put them over, put them over. That's like, the say most, they're not, that's like, the most backhanded compliment ever. It's like, if you're like, Oh my gosh, what a beautiful dress. And she's like, Oh you my know, God, thank you. And then you're like, yeah, my mom wears that one too. <laughs> you know what? I cannot even say anything nice about people without you shitting on me you for didn't. saying nice things about people. You didn't. You 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 collectively grouped up a bunch of people, teased like you were going to put them over, and then when it came time to name their name, said, fuck it, Shivani. <laughs> Just, hey, Steve, you, you're a genius. QT, you're the man. We love you, Dylan. What's wrong with that? Matt Jackson, Roll Tide. I mean, just fucking hit them up. Hey, Dana, uh, how's it going? God. Great job. Robert. <clears throat> Chrissy, you're doing great. Mm-hmm. How about old Jeffrey? Oh, we love Jeffrey. <laughs> like just say that, put them over or fucking okay. don't. Okay. They're all great. Thank you. I put them over Thank you. now. Meanwhile, in the ring, <laughs> the equalizer, <laughs> the equalizer makes Ian a hot pa- tag to the atrophied Paul Orndorff. <laughs> Dick dancer down. <laughs> Dick dancer down. And then where's his partner? If you don't like his partner, fuck, fuck you. you. He's ahead of his time. He's nowhere to be found. Here's what See, I know. Here's, here's all I know about two cold Scorpio. All right. Likes marijuana. That's okay. Really big for doing as many, uh, high flying maneuvers as he does. Like he's doing yeah. four fifties and leg drops off the top and crazy shit at a weight that, you know, is like two luchadors and supposedly, supposedly. Him and Colonel Robert Parker had some things in common. Ah, big dicks. You would say, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what else would it be? Uh, yeah. Tuco Scorpio is not a six foot seven white guy. They're friendly with uh, Sherry. I don't know. Uh, okay. But you're, you're saying you have it on. I don't want I don't say I was just, I was theorizing. I was, as you would say, I was freestyling here when you came up with that first thing I thought of. And, and he, he supposedly, according to you has, has a great big dong. Yeah. So you said they, you said he, what were you referring to then? Why don't you tell me when you said he apparently has something in common with Colonel Robert Parker? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, they both work the territories. Uh, uh they both worked, uh, WCW. They both work for WWE and now they're sort of quietly and jo- enjoying semi-retirement with the occasional appearance here or there. And, um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why when I say that one guy has something in common with another guy to you, it's automatic. Oh, it's gotta be the size of their dicks. Well, I think, uh, Dick Jones kind of made us famous, haven't it? I, Wait, I are you know. saying I'm famous? Yes, you are. Really? Yes. What alternate universe am I famous in? Uh, you, okay. Okay. I challenge you. I challenge you to go to a, a WWE or an AW show. I challenge you. I go all the time, but yeah, but I challenge you to sit in the front row and then walk through the lobby and see how many people stop and ask you for your autograph. I challenge you that I know the answer to this. Okay. So don't say I'm just another fan. You know what? Four years ago, maybe so, but bull fucking shit now. Bull fucking shit now. Why are you not, why are you cussing not, me? What not do I not do? not bullshit, but bull fucking shit now. Boy, you're just being mean. No, I'm not being mean. I'm being truthful. You have boy, Paul fell off that time. Oh man. They're beating him up. Hey, I'm enjoying this match, aren't you? Oh, it's so great. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Were you a uh I love when you raise your voice. Were you, were you a WCW? Were you off of wrestling in, uh, September of 93? Yep. We're we're done with it. Yeah. I'd put it down. What were you into in September of 93? 
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, football, basketball. Okay. I, I right. was, I was, I watched a lot of basketball on TV from probably 1990 through 1997. Okay. I, I watched of- basketball. I mean, every night that it was on. The college NBA NBA. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, oh my gosh, like Scorpio just unloading on equalizer. Yeah. Scorpio had a, a pretty good sense of timing here. He knew that this match had kind of slowed down, so he was going to pick it up. Nope. Paul took a pretty good bump on a drop kick that really did not. All connect. over Look at the you. cameraman. And there he goes. Jack cross body. That's gotta be the finish one. Oh. Rolly bad. Couldn't even take a good bump. Look, man, look at Paul's right arm. You can yeah, really see the effects here now. Yeah, I know. Wonder how Paul's doing. Have you contacted Paul about coming out and doing anything? Uh, we had one brief conversation once and it didn't work out, but okay. I know he, uh, had a rough patch where he had some medical bills and, uh, had right. fallen behind on some taxes or a mortgage or whatever. And did a GoFundMe, and that was successful. And he managed to save the house and. That's great news, man. You know, I I heard a story about Paul years ago. I don't know if it's true or not, but supposedly this is rumor and innuendo, but supposedly Vince went to the main eventers of WrestleMania. And of course he had leveraged himself in a big way, supposedly going from one bank and showing a financial statement that showed he had X amount of cash and he got that to bar to get a loan and then put the, the proceeds from that loan on his balance sheet and then provided uh, an updated P and L, uh, with a new balance sheet to a new bank without disclosing the loan and just showing that cash as if it were an asset that he had earned. And he did this with a multitude of banks, sort of an advanced form of kiting of sorts mm. and, uh, leveraged himself over leveraged himself to allow WrestleMania to not only exist, but exist on such a big platform. So because he's in a cash crunch at the time, and he really has pushed all his chips in, he allegedly, he went to the main eventers. Uh, Roddy Piper, Hulk Hogan, Mr. T, Paul Orndorff, um, and, and Bob Orton and said, Hey, uh, I want you guys to be a part of this and I want this to be, you know, hugely successful. Here's the situation. I've risked a lot of money, put a lot of money on the line here. I can pay you X amount of dollars for the match and we can do it, you know, now, or we can wait till some of the revenues and proceeds come in. And you guys can participate at a much bigger level, but you would be paid when those revenues came in, be it 30, 60, 90, 120 days from now, whatever. And all but one took the big money option. One guy took the, nope, don't believe in that bullshit. I'll take the money today. And that was Paul Orndorff. Wow. So supposedly he got like a, uh, I don't know. I'm freestyling a $10,000 payday, Mm -hmm. but had he waited, it would have been 10 X or more. Uh Well, as you just heard from uh, Conrad Thompson there, uh, he did not take the big payday, but I took the big payday, and I moved from Wyoming to a brand-new home in beautiful downtown Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, Billy, would you have done something that ludicrous? It's you, baby. Uh, well, let me say this, my good fellow. Would you stop sticking your finger in your fucking ear? And, you know, I'm going to become one of the greatest trainers in all of WWE, the only problem is that the school that I run, they're going to have Terry Taylor. That's right. They're going to have the red fucking rooster. They're going to have him trained. Don't they know that Terry's a stooge? Don't think, uh, wait a minute. When you talk about stooge, buddy, you need to talk about the two guys down in the front, Shivani and Ventura. They're stooges. I'm talking filthy person. And nevertheless, I have guys like Terry Taylor helping out training people. And you wonder why we're not training good people anymore.